God. Father, because you're mighty, my Father Lord. We declare this day, Jehovah Jireh, my Father. That fear shall never separate us from you, Jehovah Jireh, my Lord. The fear of unknown, my Father, we cancel it, Jehovah Jireh, my Lord. And as we cross Jehovah to the new year, my Father, we cross, my Father, knowing that you're with us, Jehovah Jireh, my Lord. That you've been great to our lives, Jehovah Jireh, my Lord. And we've seen your power, my Father, Lord. And your mercy have prevailed upon us, oh God. I will return it, Jehovah Jireh, my Lord. How worthy is your name, Jehovah Jireh, my Lord. How great is your name, Jehovah Jireh. your two hands to the King of Kings and tell him, I will not fear death. I will not fear the unknown. I will not fear the year 2023. I will not fear ending well. I'm not a longer a slave to fear. I'm a child of God in the name of Jesus. With thanksgiving, Jehovah, we declare we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. King, as a church, you have enabled us to see this far. We declare you are the Lord of this year as we end it. We declare we are no longer a slave to any type of any fear because we are your children. As we hear your message, Lord, take all preeminence. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, I pray. Amen. Now, every year, we are careful to say thank you, Lord. On Sunday 18th, we will gather here to give God thanks, as we have always done. So we continue with the, the subject of thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Amen. So write thanksgiving sacrifice uh, so that uh, we understand how to honor God with our sacrifices. Let us turn to Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse number 18. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse number 18. Once you have the information from the word of God, then you will make a decision of how to honor God with your sacrifices. The word of God says in Deuteronomy 8, 18, but remember the Lord your God. Now, there is always power in remembering. There are many people who forget immediately somebody has done good to them. But a good man or a good woman will always say thank you for what you've done to me. So God is challenging us that we remember him because he is the one who gives us the ability, the power, the energy, and the strategy to make wealth. You have no power and I have no power to take care of myself without God. I cannot make wealth. Many times we lie to ourselves and the enemy takes advantage of us. When we think and we believe that we can do anything and succeed minus God. 
You are seated here today. I am standing before you today because the Lord has enabled me or enabled you to sit here today. God had taken care of the children of Israel. He had shown them great miracles as he was taking care of them throughout their journey. And God realizes that at a certain point maybe these people would forget him and forget all the great miracles he has performed in their lives. So he say he reminds them not to forget but to remember. Not to forget but to remember. Now a few points under Deuteronomy 8.18 Number one, it is tempting. It is tempting to get caught in the race to become wealthy and successful. And to grow prideful when you seem to acquire riches or wealthy. I will repeat again point number one under the Trumi 818, very powerful. It is tempting to get caught in the race to become wealthy and successful and to go and to grow pride prideful when you seem to acquire riches or you seem to have reached somewhere in life every normal human being want to succeed in life on daily basis, I dream of becoming great, having wealth, having success. Now, in the process of wanting all these things, becoming wealth, becoming rich, acquiring things, it is very easy to put God aside. The God who helps you, the God who gives you life, the God who fights on your behalf, the Lord who created you, it is very easy to put him aside. And very many people have done this, and it's a great mistake. The reason why we give thanks to God is to remind ourselves that without God, we can do nothing. I am careful, God, to give you honor, to give you praise, to worship you, to humble before you, because without you, I am nothing. Listen, many times you... We sleep, we wake up the following day, and many times we forget even to say thank you, God, because you take it no more. We take it no more. It is not normal. So, as we pray, as we aspire, as we work hard to make wealth, to increase our income, to expand our businesses, we must fight the spirit of pride, the spirit of arrogance, the spirit of thinking that we have done it by our own power. May God help us to have the foundation and the spirit of thankfulness. Thankfulness, number two. We all need to remind ourselves that it is God who gives us life, strength, power and a position to make or create wealth. I repeat again, we all need to remind ourselves on daily basis, remind yourself. I remind myself, we remind ourselves that it is God who gives us life. Without God, I have no life. Without God, I have no strength. I have no power. I have no position to make or create wealth. It's God who wakes me up and gives me strength to go and do my business. To go and work. So brothers and sisters, as we conclude this year, the year 2022, 
let us remind ourselves that one thing God desires from us is a heart of thankfulness. A heart that appreciates him. A heart and a life that says thank you oh God. Because this job that you've given to me without you I could have not reached where I have reached. Number three God commands his people to remember his blessings in both bad times and good times. God commands, point number three, his people to remember his blessings in both bad times and good times. That God, every blessing that I have, every income that comes on my way, every source that I use to put food on my table has all come from you. Deuteronomy chapter 8, where we are, verse number 1 to verse number 10, quickly, we can go through it quickly. Verse number 1, the Bible says, be careful, be very careful. Don't live a life that is careless without reminding yourself that without this God, I cannot make it, I cannot manage so the word of God is saying be careful you men and women that I created the children of Israel were taken care by God he took care of them he fed them he guided them and God made sure that they were safe even in dangerous places be careful to follow every command I am giving you today because by following these commands you will go far by following these commands you will live by following these commands you will be blessed by following these commands whatever I have given to you will be preserved be very careful I am giving you today so that you may live and increase and may enter and possess the land that the Lord promised on, on earth to your forefathers. So for, it is not a guarantee that you are going to live. But if you are going to follow these commands, if you are going to follow my word, then upon the foundation of my command, you will live. And as you live, you will possess the land that I'm almost giving you. Let me declare to the children of the Most High God who are seated here today. It is not a guarantee that you will enter to the new year 2023. But you will only have a guarantee when you stand upon the foundation of the word of God and I stand upon the foundations of the word of God and I declare today by the grace of God we will cross over to the new year 2023 in Jesus precious name so for you to cross over for me to cross over for us to possess the land for us to possess the blessings there must be something that we must dare to and that is obeying the commands of God. There is increase, there is life, and there is possession. And there is a promise. So all these things will not happen just because you are shouting about them. No. They will happen when we follow the command that God has given to us or the, or the command that God is going to give to us. The next verse, verse number two. He still reminds the people to remember. Remember not to forget. Remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the desert these 40 years. Brothers and sisters, we must remember that when the year began, the year 2022, it is the 
Lord our God who has preserved us even when we have faced danger we have gone through all kinds of battles but the Lord has already the, the Lord has kept us so how can we forget the many things that the Lord has done to us how can we forget remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the desert these 40 years 40 years the Lord was leading them the Lord was guiding them the Lord was preserving them the Lord was providing the Lord was preserving God was doing everything possible to preserve these people for 40 years I don't know how old you are but I want to remind you if you are 20 you are 30 you are 50 you are 60 all the years the Lord has enabled you to live please open your mouth and give him thanks give him thanks there are many people whom you were born with who are not with you here today they are not alive they are already dead remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the desert these 40 years to humble you and to test you in order to know what was in your heart God must know what is in your heart why do you come to church why do you worship him why do you sacrifice do you come to church because of some things do you come to church so that people can God must test your intentions he must test why you are doing certain things in this life I pray today by the grace of God that when God tests us he will find us humble he will find us present worshiping him in truth and in spirit we don't worship because he has given us jobs we don't worship him because he has given us money we don't worship him because he has given us things we worship him because he is the supreme God hallelujah now listen 40 years every day they wake up God is leading them every day they wake up God is with them 40 years they face animals God is with them they face hunger God is with them and the Bible says he was testing their hearts we are seated here and every single Sunday we've been coming before the Lord and worshiping him lifting up our hands shouting to him coming every Wednesday but has he found something in your heart that is worthy worshiping him the next first quickly he humbled you causing you to hunger and then feeding you with manna now you see God is to humble them but not for a long time he said I'm humbling you but after humbling you I will provide brothers and sisters men and women of God whatever you've been going through in this life I promise you there is a God of remembrance there is a God who will not accept that you go through all these things for a long time time has come for him to come down and rescue us in Jesus precious name it's a faithful God now you will go read there you will continue reading up to verse number 20 but uh, I, I gonna uh, I gonna go to point number four quickly it is easy for believers and human beings to succumb to conceit that they they made their money without the help of God or they have reached where they have reached without the help of God many people can lie to themselves and they can feel that they can do without God my sister my brother you cannot do without God I cannot do without God 
for God to take care of us many years coming, we must follow his commands. Follow what he has commanded in his word. Friends, point number five, God shows favor to those who honor him. God shows favor to those who honor him. Not to everybody. He shows favor to the men and women who honor him. The question, right question, do you know people who take pride in their work and believe they have earned every penny by their own hard work? I think you've come across those people. They believe it is their own strength, their own power, their own knowledge that they have made whatever they have made in their lives. Many people feel this way. Many people feel this way. More especially those who don't understand the power of God or those who have not really humbled themselves to know that everything they have comes from God. However, as believers, point number six, however, as believers, we know that if we gain riches, we gain wealth, it is only because God has given us the ability to gain all those things. Without God's ability, without God's hand, it is not possible. So under that point, we will go through a few things. Number A, thanksgiving is one of the most important elements of worship. Write it down, point number A, under point number six. Thanksgiving, uh, thanksgiving is one of the most important elements of worship. One of the most powerful, most important element of worship. When you have the foundation of thanksgiving, you are a thankful person. It is easy for you to worship the Lord. This is what ushers you. This is what pushes you into the arena of worship. Any man or any woman who has a thankful heart worships God without struggle. I repeat again, thanksgiving is one of the most important elements of worship. God, I am thankful that I'm alive today. God, I'm grateful that I, I slept and I woke up the following morning. How many people have ever remembered to give God thanks for their jobs? You just go Monday to Saturday. But no single day you, you've even ever knelt in that office. You lift up your hands and you say, Father, there are many people are looking for this kind of job, this kind of job I'm doing. There are many people are at home. There are many people right now struggling, looking for an opportunity like the one you've given to me. God, I need it down. And I open my mouth and I give you thanks. Listen, any man who kneels down and humbles and, give, and gives God thanks, nobody can fight. Nobody can manipulate. I repeat again, thanksgiving is one of the most important elements of worship. Elements of worship. That you go to that business premises you kneel down for a few minutes before even you begin. You lift your hands and you give God thanks. And you say, Father, my God who is in heaven without you, this business could have not begun. But I'm here to give you thanks. I am here to appreciate. I am here to honor. I am here to show respect. Thank 
thanksgiving is one of the most important elements of worship. Anybody who has a spirit of thanksgiving goes far. The reason why many of us are experiencing delays, battles that we have fought for a long time without experiencing victory, let us check our foundations of thanksgiving. Let us turn to Psalms 50, verse number 23. Psalms 50, verse number 23. I beg you by the grace of God. I beg you. If you are, if you are working somewhere or you are doing business somewhere, as we leave this service, make sure that you open your mouth for a few minutes and give God thanks. Give God thanks. Those who have stayed here uh, long, you realize that every meeting, when I stand before people, the first thing is that let's thank God. I have never forgotten. Never. Because for people to come and gather and sit down and hear the word of God is not somebody's power. It is the power and the grace of God. Brothers and sisters, you have something that God has given to you. You've never given him thanks, but you are busy asking for more. You've never asked, you've never remembered to give God thanks for the small things he has given to you. Yet you are busy asking for more, busy asking for more. And God is wondering, I have given this man life, but he has never opened his mouth to say thank you. Listen, the Bible says, he who sacrifices, he who sacrifices, thank offerings on us me. The Bible does not say he who sacrifices emptiness. No. The word of God does not say he who sacrifices nothing. For me to honor God, there must be something that I release for that honor to be effective. Many people have never understood the power of thanksgiving. That is why they choke with it. I don't choke with it. Uh -uh. I don't choke with this. Never. We have come this far. We have fought battles here. We have faced the challenges of all kinds. But I discovered a long time ago that what moves God is the power of thanksgiving. It moves God uh, to do something that is beyond humanity. Listen, he who sacrifices thank offerings honors me and, and he prepares the way so that I may show him the salvation of God. Thanksgiving offering prepares the way for your escape. I am here to announce to every child of God seated here today that there is a power you've never discovered and this is the only power that will prepare the way for your tomorrow. May your tomorrow be better than today by the foundation of your sacrifice in Jesus mighty name. I am here and I declare by the grace of God every battle you fought this year every battle you fought years back by the grace of God and by the foundation of your sacrifice May those battles be left behind. And as you go forward, may you go forward with the success and victory that is found in the word of God. Amen. You can never pull me down. You can never succeed to finish me if I am a man who understands the power of a sacrifice. I stand here today and I declare by the grace of God in the, in the, in the spiritual realm, those powers, those authorities that are trying to pull you down, may you pull them down by the power of your thanksgiving sacrifice. Very powerful. Some of us, we have fought battles that have continued with, for a, a long time. Listen to this. Very powerful. He who sacrifices, thank offerings on us me. That means you are thank offering on us the Lord. Imagine when, when God says, hey, my daughter, you've honored me. My, my son, you've honored me. When you move the heart of God, God will not keep quiet. He will never keep quiet. He will do something powerful for your life. 
something powerful for your life. Some of us, we are here because of the sacrifices that were, um, I'm not talking about evil sacrifices, sacrifices that our parents gave on our behalf. Some sacrificed their time. They knelt down and prayed on daily basis. Some sacrifices their money. Nobody could admire them, but they sacrificed so that you can be somewhere. He who sacrificed thank offerings honors me, and he prepares the way so that I may show him the salvation of. So what what causes God to prepare the way? You are sacrifice. Point number P quickly because of time. Point number P under point number six or five, I don't know. Thanksgiving is the gateway to God's courts. Thanksgiving is the gateway to God's courts. Psalms 100, verse number five, verse number one to five. Thanksgiving very powerful, is the gateway to God's courts. Gateway. It is what opens a door. It is what presents you before God. Gateway to God's courts. You cannot ignore the word of God. Thanks. You know, I have over the thanksgiving. It, it opens the way for me. It presents me before the almighty God. Mm. Oh God, I'm praying, let this power break. Let this spirit be dismantled. The Bible says, shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Shout for joy. There is a place for shouting for joy. That place is preserved. It is there. I shout. I give him praise. That is why, brothers and sisters, when we are in the house of God, we make shouts. Because there is a place of shouts. There is a, a place of announcing ourselves in the presence of God. Then the following, worship the Lord with gladness, with the joyful songs. You, you see us dance. You see us do our, um, everything here. We, we are doing it biblically. There is a place for joyful songs in the house of God. Joy songs, praises, worship in the house of God. Don't just come before the Lord. There are principles. There, are, there, 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 there is, there is a formula. So the formula is is found in the Word of God. Verse number three. Know that the Lord is God. Know that the Lord is. Now there are two powerful words there. Know that the Lord is God. So there is a place of the Lord and there is a position of God. So the Lord, that means he rules over my life. He rules over my situations. He's above my circumstances. He's above, above my problems. He's above humanity. He's Lord. And then he is the creator of all things. So you must know he is Lord over your life. And he is God over your life. So I declare the Lord of my life will fight all my battles. The Lord of my life will preserve me. The Lord of my life will make sure that everything I do is in line with his word. May the Lord your God preserve you in Jesus mighty name. <laughs> means he created all things and because he created all things he will make sure that whatever he created will not interfere with your life. So you must know that the Lord is God. It is you who made us. The devil never made us. Human beings never made us. Who made us? God. Uh -huh. And we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. That means, you know, he leads us, he watches over us, he makes sure that uh, the enemy does not interfere with us or the enemy does not kill us. He is our shepherd. The next verse, very powerful. Now listen to this, verse number four. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. 
Bana aswe sana. This God who is your Lord and God you make a joyful noise. A joyful shout to him. You sing songs to him. There is a place of songs. There is a place of gladness. There is a place where he guides you and shepherds you. And there is your place where you give him thanks. One as well, Sana. So he says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with the praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Give thanks. The next verse. No, okay. We, that's verse number five. Okay, listen. Number C. Number C. Under point number six, I guess, we respond to God's steadfast love with our thanksgiving sacrifice. We respond to God's steadfast love with our thanksgiving sacrifice. His steadfast love, he shows us his love, he shows us his mercy, he leads us, he forgives us. How do we respond? How do we respond to his love? We respond to God's steadfast love with our thanksgiving sacrifice. Our thanksgiving sacrifice. Psalms 136. Verse number 1, verse number 2, and verse number 3. How we respond to God's steadfast love. Steadfast. Buana sana. Unasikia mtu anasema, if you love me, show it. If you love me, show it. Even do anasema. So he says, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. So if God is good to you, what do you do? You give him thanks. You respond by giving thanks. He's good to me. So I am responding by giving thanks. For his good, his love, endurance forever. Verse number three. Give thanks to the Lord of Lords. His love, endurance forever. Give thanks to the Lord of Lords. His Lord above other lords. Uh -huh. First number four. To him who alone does great wonders. His love endures for? Give thanks. Respond. Respond to God's steadfast love by giving him thanks. Very powerful. Point number D. You link yourself to the giver of everything through your thanksgiving sacrifices. You link, you link yourself to the giver of everything through your thanksgiving sacrifices. That is how you link yourself to him. You link yourself. God, no matter what I'm seeing, no matter what I'm going through, I refuse to bow. I will link myself to you. I will link myself to you. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse number 10 to verse number 15. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse number 10 to verse number 15. You link yourself to the giver of everything through your thanksgiving sacrifices. You link. It's the word of God. We don't do things here because other people are doing them, no. We do things because we are guided by the word of God. Listen, the word of God says, now this is in the New Testament. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. Enlarge. The next verse, verse number 11.
you will be made rich. You will be made rich in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Your generosity will result. This is the, in the New Testament. The next verse, verse number 13. This service. Because... This service that you perform is not only supplying this, the needs of God's people, but also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to, thanks to God, thanks to God, thanks to God. Please look at me, everybody. Whatever you have right now, that by the grace of God, God has given to you something. Please maintain it by the spirit of thanksgiving. I beg you, maintain it with the spirit of thanksgiving. Whichever, you have a job, you are doing business, you have children, you have a family, I beg you by the grace of God, by the grace of God, always thank God. The next verse, 13. Because of the service by which you have proved yourselves, men will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. The next verse, and in their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace God has given you. Very powerful. Then verse number 15. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. So you can see the foundation of thanksgiving. Very powerful. Number number wow. E, is it number E? A thankful heart is God's will for his children. A thankful heart is God's will for his children. This is the will of God for his children. God cannot thank himself. God cannot thank himself. Or me, as Jasper, I cannot thank myself. I'm looking for somebody to, to thank me. So the only thing God needs from us is just a heart of thankfulness. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse number 15 to verse number 18. A thankful heart is God's will for his children. He's looking for the children.